All right, let's talk about some more gear from the CLA collection. Maybe bigger, clunkier gear, but important just the same. As you know, our formats have changed over the years. We've gone from uh, stone, kidding. We've gone from tape to digital tape to hard drives at this point. Let's say the three formats, okay? So analog tape, digital tape, no tape. Well, I, for the longest time, most of my career, Sony 3348, digital tape machine, 48 tracks on one tape, 48K, 16-bit, that was my sound for thousands, if not 15,000 songs. I bought the machine in 89, and by 2007, I couldn't even get any more tape for it. And I bought every reel of tape that was available, and then it ended. So I think by about 2010, 2011, it might have it might have even stretched till 2013, I think, before I was literally done. And I think one of the reasons I was done was every time I needed to change something, I'd have to print that part back on tape again. So that was part of it. Plus, the tape that I was using was used, and I was having more tape failures, and that turned me against using it. Then I was using it as at just the interfaces. So after the tape era ended, for three more years, I just used it on input as the D to A's. And even for you, okay, just using it as the D to A's sounds amazing. And I think that's the future for anyone using it, okay? I had it in here using it. And the reason why, the main reason I stopped using it was because I was getting so many sessions that were 96K, and I want to mix back to 96K. All my sessions are 96K now. So I wasn't able to continue with that and stick with 48K. So that's the main reason, but I love the sound. And if they made a 96K version of it, I'd still be using it today. But another very important part of it, when I was mixing Bruce Springsteen, which I've done a few albums for Bruce, even though Bob Clearmountain does the majority of it, both boys, all of us being from Jersey, he was like, hey, Chrissy, baby, you uh, use those 48-inch tape machines, right? He goes, sure, Bruce, of course I do. You want you want a couple? I'm like, how much you want for them? Oh, I'd like to just send them to you, and you can use them. We're not going to use them anymore. Okay, sure. So Bruce packed up his two pristine 3348s in road cases and shipped them out to me, making me have a total of four 3348s with remotes, some with cases, with covers, with all the cabling you would need to hook them up. But even better is what I have is when I was using these as just D to A's, which means from Pro Tools through the tape machine digitally and then the analog outputs to the console, I have all the interconnectivity for that. So I'm able to go right from Pro Tools through some interfaces digitally into the tape machine I can go both directions, but for playback. So I have that whole working rig where you could literally plug off your computer if you have this you know, HDX card, run all these interfaces, run it to uh, your tape machine, and use it as your D to A. Just to have the uh, the sound of that is amazing. So we got some Springsteen, some CLA. It's It was a major part of my sound for most of my career was the 3348. But as I say, as I had to move forward because of the sessions I was receiving and how I had to mix back to 96K for delivery, which is what I always do. I didn't want to have a, a second Pro Tools rig just to mix to and synchronize. And with all the multi-tracks being high res, I couldn't crunch them all down to 48. I couldn't just play them and it would dither down. But we literally have all the puzzle pieces, the UFC 24s, all the cables interfaces to make it all work. <laughs> 